So actually, if you go into the EU, EU soil observatory, it's called, you see a map, and in this map, you see the, the, health, the healthy status of the soil. I mean, this is just to, to give you a, an estimate on, on which may be the, the problems that you may have in soil salinization, soil erosion, soil compaction, reduced soil fertility, or too much of phosphorus. So there are several aspects that are mapped. But this is just an indication. We know, we work in agriculture, that every field is different. And to assess the status, and to assess the status of a given field, you need to actually go there because there is the historical management on that field, the crop rotation, and it may be, or it may not be, that actually that field is affected by those degradation processes. But roughly, it's an indication. So when we, in the map, go and, and select any, any given location in the map, we will find the, the whole list of soil degradation processes that may be occurring. From water erosion, which under our conditions of Mediterranean, heavy rainfall events is a, is a factor to consider, especially if we are on a slope. It may be accumulation of heavy metals, too much or too little of phosphorus, and I will focus on soil carbon and on salinity, because actually with polysulfate and with the combination of polysulfate and compost, we are targeting those aspects more precisely. So, also keep in mind that by nature, some soils are saline or are sodic. But we are focusing on actually human-induced salinization and what we can do. If we look at this video from FAO, which is about soil-affected soils, there are two main solutions. One is gypsum application, the other one is preferred drip irrigation, localized application to deal with those processes when it comes to... And then when it comes to irrigation, in this soil health indicator, we assume, it is assumed, that any place where there is irrigation, there may be actually secondary salinization. This, you know, it is not true because it depends on the quality of the water you are using. But it's assumed if there is more than 30% of land irrigated, we will have a potential problem with salinization. And then the soil organic matter levels in our calcareous soils is usually reduced, also because of the management we've been doing of the soil. The crop rotation, the little input of organic matter from crop residues and actual, from soil amendments like compost. The soil types in our conditions, it's soils that normally range between half a meter to one meter deep, empty soils, poorly developed soils with a lot of stones. Sometimes we even have a cover of stones. I, I guess this is familiar to you. So how to manage these soils and to focus on those actually processes of soil degradation, soil salinization and soil organic matter. This was introduced with, this is our vision in ICL for the soil health promotion, and it needs the overall management strategy, considering, even considering the inputs of organic carbon, the balanced crop nutrition, and additional soil amendments like lime or gypsum that can be part of it. And in the end, in the end we are aiming for the soil to keep under a certain level of salinity, or below, to keep cation exchange capacity, and soil pH, as well as, as the overall structure that allows the holding of water and the growth of plants. And we are bringing polysulfate. Polysulfate is a unique mineral that it was known from one century ago, but it was not available in the market. There is a, a, an area in the North Sea, under the North Sea, that ICL is actually mining. It's one kilometer under the North Sea, and from the UK, there is a, a, the, the mine that allows access to mine that area. The process of mining is very simple, actually. It's like the usual mining of any rock underground by, by continuous, actually, chopping or, or crushing the rock. Then the transport, there are shuttle cars, but there are also conveyor belts to bring it 
Sorry. To bring it actually to the hoist, uh, to the to the lift, where the materials are hoisted to the surface, then crushed, sieved, screen, and split it into different uh, into different products. Actually, this, these are the products. This would be the la the, the minimum part the medium part, which is a one to millimeters particle size, and the granular part that can be already used as a fertilizer. Actually, any of these three could be directly used as a fertilizer, and currently are being used as fertilizers. This one is also used in blending with other fertilizers, and this, the standard in creating compound fertilizers or the compost with polysulfate. So the process I explained how actually it's mined polysulfate, you see there is the, the most energy uh, process is actually the ideation of the mine and the pulling up of the materials out from the mine. The rest are all low energy input processes. And that's why what it was referred to also by Spiros, the carbon footprint of a ton of polysulfate is reduced, it's very reduced. Actually, the carbon footprint depends also on how much we produce. This calculation that, referred, that was referred by Spiros was done four years ago when we were producing 700,000 tons of, poly, of polysulfate. Now ICL is producing one million tons. So actually the carbon footprint is even lower because the, the, actually the, the process has been improved in its efficiency. And then about the salinity index of this product that was referred also by Spiros, if we compare with other fertilizers supplying potassium, we see that with the different indexes, that polysulfate in any of its great standards for the production of compound fertilizers or granular for the direct application, it's much lower, one fourth the salinity index with different or half the salinity index depending on which index we are using. This uh, salt index of polyhylite, polyhylite is the, the name of the mineral, polysulfate is the brand name from ICL. You can check this one, Salt, salt Index of Polyhylite, a publication for further details about it. So of course, for crops, like I'm referring to avocado, but we have also tobacco, or those soils that are already high in salt levels, and we are trying to minimize addition of, of salts, polysulfate is the perfect fertilizer. The benefits, I will not go into the detail, Spiro referred there are more than 100 trials. They are all available in the, in the webpage, in polysulfate.com or in ICL Group, uh, ICL Growing Solutions. You can also find the individual results of each crop. But overall, what we see is in broad acre crops, in arable crops, increase in yield and in the end, return of investment for the farmer. In, uh, cash, in cash crops like potato, coffee, tea palm, this is more from tropical regions, because there the, we, go, we also get the benefit of the calcium in the polysulfate, much more in this acidic uh, kind of soils. So there we also see benefits in, in the quality of these productions. And then in the cash crops, like tomato, cauliflower, onion, broccoli, these are brassicas in many cases, and are crops that take much advantage of the sulfur that is made available by polysulfate. The idea of mixing polysulfate a standard with compost has been already always in, in, in ICL's mind. And we tried even at field level to do this mixing of a proportion 10 to 20% of polysulfate together with the compost. But actually you see the operation, it's very complicated uh, and the mixing well, you get to a kind of product that may be more or less homogeneous depending on how much effort you are putting, not in the mixing. Then the application is also complicated because it's a compost without any kind of granulation and it can be done with a specific machine. This is for an application incorporated in the soil, but it requires a specific machine to apply this compost like any, any case. And just what we are doing with biosolids is working on these pellet granules that allow the, a product that contains polysulfate inside 
all the benefits of the compost, bringing the organic matter, and that it's easy to use by the farmer with increased density from the polysulfate and the spreadability of a pellet or, or a granule in a better case. So thank you very much for your attention.